Global Health Lecture Series number 11 is what we are attempting to do today. My name is Professor Sivan Ozokeke. We are still on life expectancy trying to talk much about health prevention. It is better to prevent some of the diseases instead of waiting until we are attacked and then we start going to hospitals. The life expectancy by year number 91 is Turkey. Turkey as a country has a life expectancy of 72.96. Colombia is 92 with a life expectancy of 72.92. Jordan is number 93 with a life expectancy of 92, I mean 72.91. Mauritius, number 94 with a life expectancy of 72.80. Number 95 is China, with a life expectancy of 72.71. Number 96 is Bulgaria, with a life expectancy of 72.70. 97 is Oman, with a life expectancy of 72.58. The Dominican Republic is number 98 among countries and it has a life expectancy yearly of 72.52. Egypt is number 99 with a life expectancy of 72.50. And then Latvia is number 100 with a life expectancy of 72.27. Then we have the social determinant of health that I've been emphasizing on. That there are factors that make people live either shorter or longer lives in their country. And if we must talk of health prevention, we look at some of these factors and see how we are affected by them. Number one is the haves and the have-nots. In a country, there are people who are wealthy and there are people who are poor. And you expect those poor ones not to do well. If they are attacked by any of these diseases, they die very fast. That is why it is good for policymakers to look at the distribution of income and ensure that not only the haves are surviving, but the have nots. And this is just peculiar to all countries all over the world. In the United States, you have the whites, you have the African Americans, you have the Latinos, you have the Asian Americans, you have the Chinese Americans, and as we name them, you have all kinds of disparity in the way people look at them, even in hospitals. Then number two, you have structural reforms. In 1945, that was what Japan used to recover. When a place is restructured, where where there is good reformation in a country, that country is bound to do well health-wise. Because as those structures are being built, they also look at the health of the people and ensure that people don't just are not born and they die before the age of 30. Then you have deregulation. Of course, the economic system is not supposed to be static for people to be able to live long and enjoy their countries. And number four, you have free education. A country, in fact, I believe that all countries should have free education, at least up to college level. There should be free education because without education, people are just blind. They don't know what to do. They live in a dirty environment. If there is no good education, then the system, the hygiene, will be very poor. So I am an advocate of free education because there is a lot of wealth in this world to be able to give education to people. When people are educated, they are likely to live longer because then they will take a lot of issues seriously because they are enlightened. They just don't eat anything. Number five, you have the solid social support system. Where there is a solid social support system, like it happened in Japan within that 1945, that system is bound to do well. 
and that helped them a lot. Where people are supporting each other, where individuals are in groups and they are doing things collectively, they are likely to help one another. And in that kind of a system, the life expectancy is expected to be higher. Like we have 84 in Japan and then you have about 46 or thereabouts in most of the West African countries. Then number six is the socioeconomic status of uh, people which you have to look at. The socioeconomic status means some people are really poor within the system and you need to take them into consideration. Number seven is STDs, HIVs and AIDS. In countries where the sexual transmission diseases are rampant, where HIV is all over the place, where you have AIDS, you expect people not to live long. And because those things move from one person to the other, highly contagious, when people contact them, they pass it on to the other ones and you see people dying. So those are things we ought to take precautionary measure. We don't even allow it to enter a community, a group or a system because these are killer diseases. Then number eight is the national poverty level of a country. The national poverty level is very important. I'm sure even when tourists want to go to different countries, they want to know how poor is that country, how wealthy is that country before they venture into those kind of places. The national poverty level should always be looked at by policy makers. Then, of course, you have number nine, chronic diseases. People with diabetes, people with, who are obese, people with cardiovascular diseases. These are killer diseases which ought to be prevented from time, from the things we eat. We can take care of that. And of course, you have cultural values. If you go to Togo, Benin, and some of these countries, especially in the West African region, people still believe in their native herbs to cure whatever. So it is good that cultural values are studied, even by doctors themselves, to know why people want to be in hospital and why they don't want to be treated with what they call the white man's medicine. Then there is community health education, community health promotion. If it is done within groups and within communities, people are likely to do better in terms of life expectancy. And then finally, we have health prevention and promotion. We need to promote health. We need to promote global health and some of these things we are talking about. By so doing, people are likely to live longer. Thank you.